Uh, it all began about four years ago now. Uh, in fact, it began before that Brian and I were using the same gym and we wanted to create a show together and then sort of things happened over a couple of years and eventually we sat down and we decided to do it. Um, and we sat down and, and created the name, found the venue and, and went ahead with the first show. We sort of try and set ourselves goals every show in the, in the way that every show we try and achieve something a little bit more. Um, the last show obviously was expanding to, to the biggest venue in the area. This show will be obviously cementing our, our show there. Then we wanted to add the fight card to, to sort of make the, the, the previous show look like a warm up. We've done that now. Um, I think the next show will probably look to, to elevate the, uh, the sort of audience interaction. We're working alongside some uh, developers and things with regards to how we can involve uh, the spectator a little bit more in the show rather than just sitting there getting an unbum. Um, so I think the next show you'll see you'll see some definite UK firsts and probably world firsts for, for MMA shows. Uh, and it's just really to give a, a better experience for the, the fan really to make, make sure they keep coming back. It seems at the moment the uh, previous show is finished you guys seem to be getting on straight away with the next one. Do you guys ever take a holiday? No. Is a simple answer. Um, we're both lucky enough to be able to do this full time. Obviously, we run Gym I One full time, and we uh, we run the shows full time as well. So, uh, as as far as sort of other promoters go in the UK, I think a lot of them are doing it part time. Um, the the next three shows for next year are are all booked. Everything's planned. It's um, it's obviously just going to be a continuation. So, you know, I'm looking forward to releasing the next show poster, which we should be doing in about three weeks. Uh, we've gone for a very new look um, and hopefully it'll match in with the sort of way we want to push forward uh, with the shows next year. Your uh, co-promoter Brian is um, notoriously camera shy. Mm. He's also without doubt one of the best matchmakers in the UK. Very stressful job. The speed that he can um, get get over pullouts and things like that is, is second to none in fairness. Do you ever come in and find him crying in the office? I was going to say, it may appear to you it's second to none, but as soon as there's a pull out, uh, whatever we're doing, that's it. It's sort of, it's sort of head down and then we start. He 90% he of the time looks through and I will, you know, if I'm available, get, get on with it as well. And then it's looking at video footage, making sure it's going to be the right match up, then looking at sort of uh, geographics of it all. Have we got enough fighters from that area? Have we got too many? Um, is it what people are going to want to watch? And then we sort of talk contract terms and stuff and everything. So, you know, we might go through that process five or six times over a day. So what may seem is, you know, just a few seconds or, you know, oh, there's a pull out, but it's all right. The next day it's, it's matched up. That's because it's been relentless work all the way through. So, you know, it's nice that the process on the other end is, is apparently seamless, but I can guarantee it's not. And it is a lot of hard work, but, you know, it pays off. It seems every month brings something new and exciting for you guys. How did finding out um, Phil had been signed to the UFC go down with everybody? It went down really well. We found out midnight on, on a Tuesday and we weren't allowed to say anything until uh, it was released about five o'clock on a Thursday. So imagine having two Christmas Eves and not sleeping for two nights and, and not being able to tell anyone, but just walking around with a big smile on your face and everyone going, what's up with you? And you can't say anything. That's how it felt. So when we could finally do it, I was actually up uh, upstairs at Jimmo one teaching and Brian was downstairs um, and, and we released it because we found out the intensity had released on Twitter so we told everyone in the gym there and then and it was a great feeling, really good. Uh, big shout out to my beautiful fiance Gemma who uh, actually designs all the show posters so I'm looking forward to uh, you seeing some more of her work. Uh, a big shout out to my life partner Brian, without him uh, none of this would, would be possible, um, he means a lot to me. How, how much of me is on camera right now? Is it just my head? Uh, no, Jim I won. Just Jim I won, is it? Oh, that's good, you're not seeing my boner. Um, I always get happy when I speak about him. Um, and big shout out to the guys at Addicted MMA. They've supported us uh, without question and without fail every single time. So thanks guys and thanks for your efforts and time. Always a pleasure. And of course our signature question, Gareth, outside of martial arts, what are you addicted to?
Um, I was actually thinking about this the other day because I was reading one of your, who was it? I can't remember, I was reading an article and I thought, what, what would I say? And I think I'm probably addicted to, to fresh metal music because no matter where I am, if, if there's nothing in the background, I'll, I'll put some Metallica on or some Ramstein on and just, even if I'm showering, you know, masturbating, whatever, cooking at the same time, um, it'll just go on. Cool, I'm a big fan of pissing razors. Yeah, good. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get that checked up on. <laughs>